In the monastery, we have a bit of a post-Easter tradition. We call it the Emmaus Walk. So on the Monday after Easter, still bloated with ham and lamb and potatoes and whatever we ate the day before, a group of us gather in front of the church to walk to Kay's kitchen. Probably not the ending that we need, huh? And as we walk along, the group converses, has a good time recounting some of the trials of maybe Holy Week, the things that we discovered about each other, the liturgies that we had. If there's a guest, that's a good opportunity to get to know them better. Somewhere along the way, and it's particularly beautiful if we take a path through the woods, we'll stop and we'll read this gospel, recognizing that we too are on a journey. We read the gospel and then we walk farther until we arrive at Kay's kitchen. And it's usually there in that conversation that we can realize and recognize that we too have been walking with Christ. We're eating with Christ at our table. I'm not sure he's too interested in the burger that some of us get, but Christ is there with us. When we pause to reflect on it, it was a journey that maybe just changed us in a little way. So the question I pose for all of us today is what journey changes you? This weekend, I've been on a journey through all the sacraments, pretty much, I think. We started yesterday with a baptism. John Andrew Dirksen, a small baby in the baptistry back there. Sacraments are a good reminder of our journey in the Christian faith. So we start with baptism, where he encountered Christ in that refreshing water that we were just blessed with. His journey is just beginning. Earlier this afternoon, I got to celebrate First Communion in St. Joseph with the second graders. 37 wiry, wild bodies awkwardly waiting to be welcomed to the table for the first time. Their journey that day changed their interaction with Christ in the community. Fully welcomed and accepted at the table of the Lord, that sacrament strengthens them for the journey. Tonight, we're about to approach another sacrament, a trifecta for me, in confirmation of Dara Cutter, where he, on his journey, experiences the Holy Spirit in a real way, all of us experiencing the Holy Spirit in a way that calls our gifts, given to us by the Holy Spirit, to share them with community. His journey, our journey, changes us. It's a journey worth having. It's an encounter with Christ, an opening of the Scripture and a breaking of the bread. To end my sacramental journey this weekend, I spent a few hours the last few nights with Father Mark Thamert, who died last evening after a three-year battle with cancer. His journey, his encounter with Christ has been transformational, sacramental. Last night, as he prepared to die, the only thing that he could keep saying is, oh man, in typical Mark fashion. I picture that like Cleopas and the other disciple in our gospel reading tonight, he was experiencing the fullness of Christ's revelation. The opening of the scriptures, the breaking forth of what all this sacramental life and Christian faith means. Oh man, I can only imagine 
his experience, an encounter with the risen Christ, a journey worth having. So as we go forth today, I ask and challenge all of us to think, what kind of journey do you want to be on? Where in your life do you want and need to encounter Christ? How can all of us have a collective, oh man, it's a real faith we're hanging on to. Christ's revelation and opening of the scriptures and breaking of the bread here for us. A true gift of the Holy Spirit. May our journey together as Christian people be filled with the breaking open of Scripture and bread. May we be strengthened by God's Word and God's food. May together we journey on a trip that's worth it, filled with faith, supporting each other, buoying each other up when times are challenging so that no one walks away from the journey saying it's not worth it but knowing God's love Christ's presence along with us when we look to the people to our right and to our left are we too walking with Christ